Back in the day in middle school, when you were learning percentages, life was great. You get a test, you got one number, you got another, you look at it and you're like, I got this. All I gotta do to get the answer, take one number, divide it by the other. If that's not it, switch it around. No big deal. Boom. But now in high school, we're a little trickier. But still, I mean, this is doable. You got a couple numbers, you got a calculator, you read it, you think you got, I got this, no problem, it's percents. I always got percents. Anyway, the thing you gotta be careful of is in high school, percents, well, they're shady. You gotta watch out for these guys, they're tricky. They're uh, up to no good. Being a teacher, watching students make these mistakes with percentages, it's kinda like watching Charlie Brown. Lucy says she's gonna hold the ball, but I know she's not, and everybody watching knows she's not. And students, they fall for the same tricks every single time with these shady percentages. Anyway, uh, students see some numbers, they pick up their calculator, start plugging some stuff in, get an answer. Sad story. It's a trap. The whole time. My name's Philip Brown. I'm the Bearded Math Man. And I'm here to help. I want to show you how you can get 100% of percentage problems correct 100% of the time. Stay tuned, I'll show you how. Okay, let's take a look at the problem from the introduction. Um, the key is that the most important thing is that with a problem like this, you have to write an equation. If you write out an equation and you do it carefully, the algebra should be something that's very simple and you're going to get the right answer. Beyond that, uh, when you're learning percent problems in high school, what you're actually doing is you're practicing the skill of being able to write an equation. You see, later in math, writing equations gets kind of tricky. And if you're trying to learn it when it's tricky, uh, it's going to be very frustrating. But writing equations for percentage problems, it's very accessible. So you're developing a skill that's going to really come in later, than, and it has absolutely nothing to do with percentages. So write out the equation. The other thing is, the moment you pick up a calculator, your IQ just drops. Calculators don't really do math. They do calculations. Writing equations is what math is. Well one aspect of it, much more so anyway, than doing simple calculations. So anyway, let's take a look at this problem. Uh, Bob lost 40% of his friends, remaining friends at that, and he now has 23. We're being asked to find out how many friends Bob had. I think the question that is begging to be asked here is, what's going on with Bob? He's lost 40% of his remaining friends? Sounds like he's in a downward spiral. Hmm, wonder what happened. Anyway, uh, the number of friends that he has now, the way we would figure that out is we take the number of friends he had before and multiply it by the percentage that's remaining. Now I put remaining in red here because that's what we're being asked to find out. We're not being asked to find out how many friends he lost, which it tells us is 40%. We're being asked to find out how many, many remain. But before we get to that, let's take a look at um, what our variable is going to be. It's actually going to be an unknown because it's just one value. But anyway, uh, the number of old friends is the thing we don't know. And that's what we're being asked to find out. So we're going to use x for that. Now, the percentage remaining is going to be 60%. If you lost 40%, you have 60% left. So we're going to use 60% because we're being asked to find out how many he has now, and he lost 40, 60% remain. So let's go ahead and write our equation. The friends that he has now are 23. He has 60% of what he used to have. So this is the equation, and this is true. He has 23 friends now, and that is 60% of what he used to have. He lost 40, so he kept 60. So to solve this, it's uh, just some basic inverse operations. 60% uh, is 60% is multiplying by x, so the inverse is to divide. You use your handy dandy calculator, you get 38.3, and it's a repeating 3. So you have to round this because we're talking about number of friends, so we need a we need an integer answer, actually a, a natural number answer, and. Um, well, you can't have a third of a friend because there would be nothing left. All you got is 
Hmm, I guess that friend would die. Anyway, so you'd have 38 friends. So he used to have 38 friends. Percentages are, of course, comparing a, a number to 100. And they lend themselves nicely to decimals because if you had a decimal 0.743, as a percentage, that would be 74.3% because it's the hundredth place, which is right there. Now, a basic calculation, if you wanted to take 15% of 23, well, all you got to do is do 23 times 0.15 and you get 345. So if you wanted to do a 15% increase of 23, well, that would be 23 plus 3.45. And this is often how percentages are calculated in middle school. Um, but uh, I think I got something a little easier for that. So, for example, if I wanted a 23% increase, I could do that in one step. Sorry, a 15% increase of, of 23. Well, I could uh, do this just like this right here. You see uh, this one right here? Well, that represents 100% of the, the 23 and the 15 right here, well, that's of course the 15% increase. So when you do 23 times 1.15, that's really like 23 times 100% plus 23 times 15%. So anyway, a uh, little quicker, a little easier, and yeah, we're gonna be using that here. The other thing I wanna talk to you about before we do our, our first example, is uh, when you're talking about things that are on sale, uh, if something's 75% off, then you're actually spending 25%. And a lot of times the problem will give you, give you the percentage one way and ask you to figure out something that's kind of the opposite. So you need to be able to translate between those two pretty, pretty easily. So let's go ahead and get started. Jonathan's rent. $10,800, and that's a 25% increase over his, over his previous rent. So one of the things we're going to be really focusing on is writing equations. Um, and the other thing we're going to be focusing on is coming up with a guess. I don't mean an exact number, and it's going to take just a second. Just make sure you read the problem, and then you should be able to anticipate if your answer is going to be bigger than what you started with or less. So Jonathan's rent of this well, that is an increase over the original. So I would expect that the original would be a smaller number. All right, so now let's write the equation. His, uh, his new rent, here's how we find his new rent. His new rent is his old rent with a 25% increase. So if I did a 25% increase, that would be 1.25. So that's my, that's my equation right there. That's how I would figure out the relationship between the new and the old rent. Now I know what the new rent is. The new rent is um, $10,800, and the old rent, the old rent is what it is I've got to figure out. So I got $10,800, and that's the thing I don't know, which we'll go ahead and call X, times 1.25. Now to, to solve this, all we've got to do is basic inverse operations, so we have to divide both sides by 1.25. Divide by 1.25, bring up our handy dandy calculator. So 100, zero, one, zero, zero, there we go. Divided by 1.25, 8640. 8640. Now, I believe that's probably right because I wanted a, a smaller number because his rent was increased. Now, if I wanted to figure out if this was right, what I would do is I would just go ahead and to check it, I would go ahead and multiply it by 1.25. If I increase this number by 100, or if I increase it by 25%, and I get $10,800 back, then I'm right. And I went ahead and checked it, and it is right. So his old rent is $8,640. Okay, next one. Actually, we got two of them going on right here. We got 28 students. 
uh, who wore too much perfume, they stink. And that's a decrease of 5%. And then the other one, it's an increase of 5%. So these are totally different problems. And the reason I'm putting these here is because you have to be careful. You have to make sure you're reading and understanding what, what is being asked. Um, so, well, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do this. So 28 students wore too much perfume, and that is a decrease from yesterday. And it's asking us how many students wore too much perfume yesterday. Well, uh, since this is a decrease from yesterday, I would expect yesterday's to be a bigger number. Whereas over here, today's number is an increase from yesterday. So I would expect yesterday over here to be a smaller number. All right. So 28 students wore too much perfume, and that is a decrease. So 28 students wore too much perfume, and that is a decrease of 5%. So if that's a decrease of 5%, that means it's 95% of what it was the day before. So what I got right here, I got number of students today, and this is the number of students yesterday, and then my percentage. So to solve that, you would just divide by 0.95. And let's go ahead and take our calculator out right here. 28 divided by 0.95. And we got 29.4. Hmm. Well, 29.4, we're talking about number of students. And 29.4, well, we have to round this appropriately. This is less than five, so this would be 29 students. 29 students. Now, we said a minute ago we were expecting an increase, and yep, we got the increase. So I believe that's probably correct without checking. I could check by, you know, recalculating it, doing it the other direction, and taking 5% uh, away from 29 and seeing if I got 28. It works. So here on the other one, what we've got is we've still got 28 students from today, and that is an increase. So since it's an increase, I have 100% of what I had yesterday plus the 5%. So inverse operations to solve this. Let's go ahead and get our calculator back up here. 28 divided by 105. One. 0 0.05 and I got 26.6666 so 26 and two-thirds well that would be 27 students because you have to round to the nearest whole number and yeah so 27 students is a decrease and that was also expected so the thing I'm trying to get you to see here is that if you set up the equation uh, it makes life easy so I don't really know what this thing is right here that's kind of ugly <laughs> All right, next one. Yep, we did those. So we got a zombie crusher skull, a zombie skull crusher. Uh, it's a bat. It's a 2000. It's on clearance for $93.75, and it's been discounted by 25%. So the question is, well, what did it cost before the discount? So here's, here's how we figure this out. We got new price. And the way you figure out your new price is you've got your original price times the discount. Now, of course, that's a percentage discount, right? Percentage discount. So um, this is the relationship between the new price and the old price. So let's go ahead and plug these numbers in. So the new price was $93.75. We don't know the original price. That's what we got to figure out. And the discount, well, you see how the discount is 25%? That means that you're spending 75%. You save 25, you're spending 75. So to solve it, all we have to do is divide. Get our calculator ready again. So we've got 93.75 divided by 0.75. Now before I hit equal, since this is on sale, I would expect a price that's higher than $93.75. So let's go ahead and see. Ah, 125. That's such a nice, easy number. It makes me believe that it's probably correct. So the original price was $125. Now, when I write the equations, you're looking at it and you're going, that's such an easy equation. Mm, why do I need to write that? Well, for good reason. If you don't, you're probably going to do some, I call it, random 
act of math. You're going to pick up the calculator and start plugging in numbers. You will probably not get $125. You'll get something close, but it won't be $125. And then when you find out the real answer, you're going to try to adjust all your work and all this kind of stuff. But because you've never wrote an equation, you're just guessing at what went wrong. What, what, what goes wrong on these percentage problems is not writing the equation. Write the equation. It makes life easy. Okay, last one we're going to do for now. Uh, I would like to do uh, what percent is or what percent profit is and all those kinds of things, but we're going to run out of time here. So uh, let's just go ahead and dive in and do this one. In 2012, the company had a profit of 135 and some change. 2013, they had a profit of that. And we're, we're being asked to calculate the percent of profit increase from this to this. Now, a lot of times when you're being asked to calculate percent of profit increase they don't actually give you the profit but in this problem they do so really all we're doing is we're figuring out the percent of increase is what we're doing right here so the way you do that is you do you have to figure out the increase and you divide it by the original that's what you have to do so the increase well that would be 150,675 minus the original and then all of that divided by the original. And let's go ahead and get our calculator back up here. So 156.75 minus 13.5890. Now, if you hit if you hit divide by 13.58, you know the 135,890. Uh, what it's actually going to do? The calculator is actually going to just divide this number by the by itself it's not going to it's not going to group this together like this numerator is a, a group together and in the order of operations you have to do groups before you can do division with reducing is division so we go have to go ahead and hit enter and then we can divide that answer by our original amount and we get that looks to me like 10.9% so 10. Point nine percent so anyway um, I'm hoping you see that if you write out an equation and you write out some relationship then it's really straightforward and the algebra is pretty simple and you're not gonna miss those problems plus writing out equations man makes life good if you found this video helpful or informative whatsoever uh, you can help me out by just clicking like and subscribing to my channel also if you go to my website, thebeardedmathman.com, I've got some practice problems on percentages there for you, and I'll put a link in the in the description, and um, I will also post the solutions to those practice problems. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching, and have a good day.